ML Nation, episode 160. Whether it's monetarily, whether it's through relationships or, or whatever, you'll always be taken care of if you just focus on serving people. If you want to be successful, you just have to copy what MLM leaders do. Welcome to MLM Nation, presented by your host, Simon Chan. Where you'll learn strategies, secrets, and inspiring stories from today's top MLM income earners. Hey, MLM Nation, this is Simon Chan. And before we get started the show, just want to highly encourage you to check out MLM Nation Insider. The training, the community, the um, membership, it's awesome. Okay, it's every, minute, every week, there's a 90-minute training where you can ask me live questions. You can email them in. I'll answer any questions you want if you need strategies. Uh, like, for example, one of our members, she needed help with approaching a dentist. I gave her some tips and strategies. And then a week later, the dentist became a customer. So uh, that's just one example, one of the success stories. A lot of things I help you with. I'll be more than happy to do that. Uh, just go to mlnationinsider.com for a limited time. You get a dollar trial for seven days. You also have access to over 17 different courses. I normally sell for $47. But as a member, you get it for free. And you also get uh, 31 newsletters you can download with the latest tips. And a lot of other goodies on and on I can go on. But I just want to keep this short. Definitely check it out. Go to mlnationinsider.com. You, if you never heard of me talk about it, then definitely check it out. mlnationinsider.com. It's a dollar trial for the first seven days. If you don't like it, you just can cancel it. But uh, I'm sure you will. And if you want to keep it for a dollar and download everything, you want to keep it and cancel, hey, you can do that as well. I want to do whatever I can help you. So go check it out, mlnationinsider.com. All right, with that said, let's get ready for the show. ML Nation, this is Simon Chan, and I'm fired up to bring one of our special guests today, a friend of mine who I've known since 2009. It is Dr. Mike Okauchi. Dr. Mike, are you ready to make it happen? Oh, yeah. I love Dr. Mike. You know, Dr. Mike Okauchi is a six-figure earner, one of the top leaders in this MLM company, while building the business part-time. And he has an extremely inter- interesting background, okay? So let me share with you. Dr. Mike was born and raised on the North Shore of Ahu in Hawaii. And forgive me if I pronounced that wrong. I'm a Brooklyn, New York City boy there. <laughs> and uh, he, Dr. Mike attended Pacific University in Oregon, majoring in molecular and cell... This is so geeky and nerdy, I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> molecular and cell biology and was awarded the Murdoch Research Scholar Award from Oregon Health Science University. His research was published in the Cardiology Journal when he was only 18 years old. So this guy is pretty smart, okay? 18 years old, I don't know what the heck I was doing, but definitely wasn't writing uh, medical cardiology journals there, papers there. Uh, Dr. Mike later attained his doctorate of chiropractic from Southern California University of Health Sciences, where he graduated in the top 10 of his class. Then three years later, he earned a title fellow at the American Institute of Integrative Medicine. Currently... Dr. Mike's chiropractic wellness clinic was selected as the number one alternative wellness center in Southern California. He's been featured on national TV, radio, magazine publications where he talks about health and wellness. Now, on top of that, if that was impressive enough, he's doing all the, he's doing, he's a six figure earner building MLM part time. Dr. Mike is also a very accomplished ukulele. And per, uh, forgive me if I pronounced that wrong again. Ukulele, if that's like a little guitar. He's a virtuoso and he's played with Bruno Mars and also featured artists on the Legends of the Ukulele album. So he does all this, Mike. He's a chiropractic, runs wellness center. He's a ukulele legend and doing MLM at the same time and with a top earner. So, Dr. Mike, I've just given a brief intro, but please share more about what I just talked about and out of all that stuff, accomplishments, why the heck did you do MLM? <laughs> well, good morning, uh, Simon and, and the rest of MLM Nation. It's an honor to be here. You know, I listen to this podcast uh, maybe on a daily basis now. There's so many episodes, and, and um, it's amazing what you've been doing with this with this movement. Um, but thank you for the introduction. And uh, jumping off about that, you know, like your question to me on why did I do this? Why did I jump into the industry uh, well, for me, growing up on the North Shore of Hawaii, I didn't come from much. You know, we didn't have much. You know, the the house that I grew up in had a big hole in the roof, and there was a mango tree that would grow inside of our bathroom. And um, you, you know, our family didn't have the monetary means for a lot of things, but we had a lot of love. 
And at a young age, I knew that a lot of love didn't pay the bills. So uh, I, I saw my grandmother, she kind of jumped into the industry and she did Tupperware parties and uh, I would help out with that and all that kind of stuff. But at a young age, I, I really saw the value of entrepreneurism. I used to sell erasers and candies and all that kind of stuff at school. And um, I, I had this bright idea after going to high school and college to become a chiropractor. And there's a long story behind that. But, uh, it, you know, once... I, and the reason, by the way, guys, the reason why I wanted to become a chiropractor was somebody once told me that um, you could make a lot of money as a chiropractor. So I went to chiropractic school and I graduated and it didn't seem like what I meant it to seem like, you know, like the money didn't come in right away. I all of a sudden knew that I had to build a business, but it was taking a long time. So um, one of my friends introduced me to a company in, I think it was about 2005, the ending of 2005. And I saw it and I jumped in, but I had, I had some preconceived notions because I seen other people do network marketing businesses and I, and I saw them actually get shut down and, and that left kind of a stigma in me. But what, what really got me into the industry was at this time, at about 2005, I saw, I saw other professionals getting involved with this. So seeing other professionals get involved, I said, hey, you know what? If they're, gonna, if they're doing it, why can't I? So, so I jumped in and it, it's been a roller coaster ride. You know, there's been the ups and downs and all this kind of things. But ultimately, uh, what, once I started and I, and I really got my feet wet in the industry, I saw what what it could do, and, and it really stood behind my purpose in life on really helping people to live their best life. And, and that was the real reason why I really gave my all. You know, the, the money was nice and all this kind of stuff, but even, even better was seeing people go from the, I don't know if I can do this, I wish I can have my dream life, to stepping into who they should be, who, who they were meant to be, and then living that life. And that's, that's the whole reason why I even jumped in and stuck around in the industry, Simon. Hmm. You know, um, on a side note, you, I love mangoes. But you, you said you had a, your house had a mango tree grow in there. So are you, are you sick and tired of mangoes? Since you, no, have... you know what? I never got sick and tired of mangoes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I love you know mangoes. what's funny is that the, so the mango tree would grow into our bathroom. And when mango season came around, you'd walk in the bathroom in the morning and there were mangoes on your bathroom floor. So that was a pretty awesome. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Um, you know, it's very cool growing up in New York where, you know, one third of the time is freezing. Yeah. So um, for – actually, before I'm going to ask this question, personal question, since I've known you um, for a while, you've been in the profession for quite some time. What is your worst, worst moment in network marketing? And <laughs> the point that you – but somehow you didn't quit, and that's why you are where you are today. Well – you know, thinking back on this, um, I don't know if I like to remember my worst moments, but my worst moment happened in it. I call this the perfect storm in my life. And it happened at the tail end of 2011 going to 2012. Um, I was building the, the my first company that that I really got involved in. And I also had another venture uh, that I partnered with uh, another friend. Uh, he was actually on on uh, MLM Nation, Daniel Song, and we had that going on. And then we, uh, I was also running a full time practice. I was practicing maybe about forty, fifty hours a week. And then on top of that, number three came along. Our third child came along, and so I was I was running my practice during the day, going to network marketing meetings at night and then doing calls to the East Coast because the company that we were, we were um, consulting with was on the East Coast till about, uh, I, I would wake up in about, at about 3 o'clock in the morning because it would be 6 o'clock that time. And then having to take care of child number three. So all of this was, was kind of going down. And then my health really went down the tubes. I mean, I hit, the, I hit rock wall. I was in ultimate adrenal fatigue. And I couldn't really do much. So what happened was I kind of took a break from building that, that first network marketing company. And then everything just fell apart, Simon. I mean, 
the first company that I that I that I was building with, I mean, there were some disagreements that happened, and then um, I voluntarily chose to leave the company. Uh, I just wanted to walk away because I I personally needed a needed just a break from everything because I had too much on my plate. The business venture that we were doing, that I'm consulting with on the East Coast, that went down the tubes. I mean, and then I couldn't even go to my own practice for more than about two and a half, three hours a day. And and ultimately, because of that and because of my health, I was I was really missing out on some important times in my my new child's life. I, I mean, to this day, I don't remember her being a little baby. And all this time, I mean, everything was weighing down on me. We had dramas going on in in the businesses. I had drama going on family wise, drama going on in in my office and all this stuff. And, And really what I wanted to do was I just wanted to dig a hole, put my head in it and just bury it and then just not hear anything. And I I know a lot of people go through these times. Everybody has these moments. But there were four key things that I learned during this time. You know, there are four key things. The first one is that you only lose ground when you throw dirt. And a lot of times uh, people – this may happen to you guys in in your career in the industry is that maybe the company that you're building with – you know, it's not that right fit for you and you choose to move on. And sometimes people within that company, they may say things to you, about you, um, in front of your back, behind your back, whatever. And sometimes you will react to that. As humans, humans we, we're going to do that. And I got caught up into this. And what, But what I found out was that when I started doing that, it only hurt myself and it hurt the, it hurt the relationships that I built and that was the number one thing that I learned is you only lose ground when you throw dirt. Number two is that the relationships that you build should always come before the businesses you build. You know, businesses will come and go, but your relationships should be of utmost importance uh, of for your life. Because, you know, I've, I've lost a lot of relationships and I've gained a lot of relationships. But I, I look back on some of the things that happened during these worst moments and the relationships is what I miss the most with some of the people that, you know, that that we we had our, our parting ways. The third one is that sometimes you got to look at business as just being business, you know, and you got to take you got to take that personal side out of it and really recognize that, hey, you know what, when when it comes down to business, you got to treat the business as business and you can't get it personal. You know, and then the fourth thing is that if you quit during these downtimes or what we call the valleys, you're never going to see the views from the top of the mountain. And, and so I look at that is if I were to stay in in that mode of where I was in 2012, I would never have seen the views of where I am now. And I'm, and I'm really thankful to have gone through that. I, I'm really thankful that. You know, that, that all those things happened because it was a learning experience. And, you know, I'm, I'm not happy with some of the things, you know, how I acted during the time. I'm not happy with some of the outcomes. But, hey, you know what? I learned from it and I moved on. What was the self-talk that motivated you to wake up every day? You're down in the valley. Oh, right? And you know, yeah. that, you know that you want, you know, if you keep going, it'll get better. But sometimes it's really hard to take that first step. You just want to like sometimes give it up or just stay at home and do nothing. Just veg out on the couch and watch TV. But what kept you going? What's the self-talk? Yeah, you know, I, I, I had that self-talk. I had that self-talk of, hey, you know what? Just sit on the couch and, you know, don't even step forward anymore because you did it. And look, look what happened. I had that self-talk. But what kept me going was, you know, I, I, I've played baseball all my life. And I equate a lot of my, my things in life to baseball. And there was this time when I was in high school and I was, I, we were at our, our baseball tryouts and I was playing with some really, really good athletes. And our coach was hitting us these, these ground balls, hitting us balls over and over and over again until, we, until literally we would drop at our knees. And I was the one up and he kept hitting me, hitting me, hitting me. And until I got to the point where literally I couldn't stand up anymore. I couldn't stand up. And I was I was about to barf because I mean the, the amount of effort that we were giving to this time, and he and he kept hitting me the balls, and I started just yelling at him. I threw my glove, and he runs up to me, and he and and he he kind of like leans over, and he goes, "When life gets you down, are you just going to lie down on the ground and just watch all the balls pass by, or are you going to do something about it?" And that stuck with me, 
for all my life to this very day. So when whenever I feel down, I I, I hear my coach just, just like his him his face right next to me and saying, "When life gets you down, are you just gonna lie down the lie down on the ground and watch the balls go past you?" And then so when I when I think about those things, I just say, "Hey, you know what? All it takes is do something, do something to move forward." That, and so that's what I did, and and, and I, I mimicked what I did back when I was in high school. Hey, I rolled over on my right side. I rolled over on my left side. I just did something to get movement rather than just staying stagnant. So you know, I, I would I would go out and hang out with a friend, or I would go out and maybe watch a movie. Just doing something, getting forward movement, rather than just sitting there and and talking to yourself and getting into that negative mindset. You got to do something. Um, going, you know, fortunately, you know, living in Southern California, you get to go to Disneyland. So. Just go to Disneyland. They said it's the happiest place on earth. You know, you got to find something that that switches off that negative mindset. Well, your baseball coach would definitely uh, be very, very proud of you today. You know, by the way, who was one of your baseball idols growing up as a kid? Someone that you looked uh, looked up to? You know, growing up, um, I, I I'm a huge Yankees fan. Uh, so I knew there was something that made us get along. Well. Ah, yeah. I'm a huge Yankees fan, and um, I love love Roger Maris. You know ro- all the stuff that he went through, the turmoil, and and what he accomplished through all of that. You know, breaking Babe Ruth's home run record and all that stuff. Um, that that's who I looked up to growing up. And then as I got older, then I still stuck with the Yankees, and it, um, Derek Jeter was my was one of my role models. Yeah, and like these, yeah, you know, I think um, same thing with me growing up. With these sports idols that we look up to, I mean, <clears throat> they're not perfect, but there's a lot of lessons, especially if you actually look at yeah, Roger yeah. Maris, the adversity he had to go through yeah. to, make, uh, to break that. And mm-hmm. uh, and I think sometimes part of success is like you take bits and pieces of mentors. Like we don't, There's no real one mentor that's perfect in everything, but bits Absolutely. and pieces of different people. And it all comes out to mindset, right? Like uh, Derry Jeter yeah. is probably the hardest working baseball player, one of the hardest working ever, and that's why he played for so long for the same team and uh, performed at such a high level. Mm-hmm. It's really incredible. Um, so let me ask you this: the how do you? What was the major turning point for your business? So you went through the down the valley. What was the turning point that got you to where you are today? So fast forwarding out of what was that two thousand and twelve. So started in I started up and I, and I got up got off the couch you know the, the metaphorical couch and I I I knew I wanted to still be in the industry so I need, I I was looking for a new place a new home and found a new home and it, and it it was a relatively new company and they they were about a year and a half two years into it they they still didn't really do much and there was something about it for me that resonated with myself, you know, and and that's really why I chose it. I mean, there were all these other opportunities that that I saw and I said, wow, those are great. But there was something about the company that I, that I chose that just resonated with me. And so I took the step forward. And, and and at the time, everybody was everybody was brand new into it. And we we're going along. And some of us were seasoned in the industry and some weren't. And so, you know, those of us that were seasoned in the industry, we thought, hey, we got this. You know, we can just go out there and blast off and, and really, really take, take the company by the reins. And then there was this, this other girl, and she's the sister of, of Eugene Hong. And you had Eugene Hong on one of the episodes. Uh, her name is Ruby Hong. So at this time, I mean, she's never done anything in the industry before. And she goes out there and just kicks our butts. I mean, she just she's just murdering it and building and building and building, not really knowing the the intricacies of of the building process. And really, I I, I stopped and I reflected, and I, I think the the whole company actually as a whole reflected and it looked, what is she doing? And we saw that all you needed to do was really simplify things. And if you can simplify and duplicate the simple things, that's really what makes your business move forward. And that's what she was doing. We, on the other hand, 
we're trying to overcomplicate things because we want it to be the show. We want it to be the messenger. Okay. And what we were doing is we were giving these spectacular presentations. I mean, to this day, I'm like, our presentations were top notch. I mean, I loved it. But you know what? It didn't duplicate because people couldn't say the things that I was saying, you know, and nor should they. And especially, and especially, you know, for you, you you come from a medical background, so, exactly. and, you, and you're in a health and wellness company. You probably give all the little ingredients that oh everyone my gosh. can do. Yes, yeah. I mean, my part would take about an hour and a half just to talk about the intricacies of all of these metabolic processes. And I step back and I'm like, okay, what was the results of that? Well, nobody signed up, and it wasn't because. People didn't believe in the product. It didn't. It wasn't because people didn't see the results. It's because people were looking at me and saying, I could never do that. I don't know what he just said. And here we have this other girl who's not saying a thing. And her answers for some of the questions that she got was, I have no idea, but I can go and find out for you. And then she would refer them to me. And she was just kicking our butts. That was my aha moment saying, I need to be the messenger and not the message. And I need to step out of this, stop being Dr. Mike, and start being Messenger Mike. That's what I needed to be, was just be the messenger, not the message. I like that. The transformation from Dr. Mike to Messenger Mike. I like that. And and ML Nation, by the way, the two uh, mentors that Dr. Mike mentioned, Daniel Song, and Eugene Hong, excellent, excellent leaders. They actually have amazing episodes at ML Nation. Daniel Song was episode 19. Go a little bit back. And uh, Eugene, Eugene Hong was episode 44. And both of them are very, very inspiring stories. And it's just cool to me because I've known, especially Daniel for a while, just to see him, how he has grown and then how he took you under his wings and now you're successful. And uh, it's really exciting. I mean, what, what gets you excited about the network marketing profession? You know, I, I see... I see a lot of changes in the industry, one being um, this this more of a unification, you know, and, and stuff like this, you know, MLM, MLM Nation. I see some of the other trainings out there, uh, GoPro events, the mastermind events. And there, really, there's this unification about the industry rather than looking at, oh, my company versus your company, you know. And, and, and I think that we're elevating the consciousness of the industry as a whole that we're all in it together and everybody's everybody's aiming towards the same goal. And I see a lot of professionals. I, I have colleagues that are jumping into the industry, whereas maybe 15, 20 years ago, that wouldn't have been the case. You know, there was this stigma that surrounded the industry. But now you see almost every single major company out there trying to get their hands on on some company. You know, and, and that's what really gets me excited is we're now becoming, you know, more accepted, kind of like how the franchising model got accepted. And now people don't even bat an eye towards franchises. You know, when when people say, oh, I want to go and make money, they automatically think of I want to go buy a franchise. And that's why, why I'm so excited now is because we're getting to that point where when people say, hey, I just lost my job. Maybe I should go find a network marketing company. That's what gets me really excited. What do you think is propelling this change, how it's getting more more accepted? What's well, driving this movement? Obviously, I think that there's there's a mul- multiple factors. One being you know, w- the way that the economy is growing or lack of growth. Um, and the, the other side is you're having this whole generation that has gone to college that is not you know, being able to get the jobs that uh, they went to school for. So you have a lot of these these people that have uh, maybe fifty, seventy thousand dollars in student loans that can't get a job in their degree. So they're looking at alternatives to you know to their to their uh, career. And now, and again, this generation has seen other people get involved in the industry. And now there, there's another thing that's going on is that a lot of companies are are really leveraging. Um, the internet, you know, uh, I see a lot of uh, you, social media sites like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Periscope. These outlets are making it a lot easier for people to uh, people to really build a business rather than the the old school way of holding these gigantic meetings at hotels. 
because a lot of people couldn't do that. They're like, well, that's fine and dandy, but I can't do that. But now you have the average stay at home mom who can literally build a multiple six figure income from her smartphone. And, you know, people are looking at that and saying, well, yeah, I can do that as well. So that's what I think that it's it's really exploding. And I, I don't think that we've seen the explosion yet. I think we're we're probably about two to three years out from really seeing that that explosion. But we're on the cusp of it. Now, I like the way you brought up you brought up a really good import, uh, important point about the kids generation now where uh, we're going to college and then they come out with no. No secure future, right? Actually, I just read something today that if a prospect asks you, if I have to, you know, invest a thousand dollars, can you guarantee me that I'll be successful? You know, a great question to ask back is, would you invest a hundred fifty thousand dollars in four years of your life to work and train and not be guaranteed any one penny back? And of course, yeah. the answer is no. But that's really what college yeah. is right now, right? No, exactly. And, I mean, and it, never be able to pay that loan back, one hundred fifty grand. You know, that's actually post tax money. Most college grads what make forty, fifty thousand, and after taxes is twenty five, thirty thousand, and then you're living at home with your parents. You got bills to pay. It will take you for, and you have car expenses. I mean, you got to have a life as well. Like it will take you forever to pay that. And I think kids nowadays realize that there's a better future. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for myself, you know, getting getting out of college, there was nothing that I could really do that I would I would actually enjoy doing. With a molecular and cell biology degree, except, you know, being in a lab and, and then that's not what I wanted to do. So I had to go and look. I, I was kind of like forced into becoming a doctor because I, I can't do anything with that degree that I wanted to do. And then even going, going to chiropractic school, that's still not guaranteed because I didn't have a job coming out of that. I had to create my own job. I had to build a business from ground up. So... You know, the the reason why I also get so excited about the industry is that you don't have to create anything. You don't have to create the product. You don't have to create the marketing materials. You really don't have to do anything. All you got to do is talk to people and share with them everything that was created for you. So, I mean, when I look at that, I was like, that's a no brainer. If I don't have to make my own business cards and print my own brochures, I'm in. Hmm. You know, I have to ask you about time management because you're a man of many talents and you run a wellness center and you built like a six-figure business totally part-time. Mm. So what tips, how, first, how do you do it and what tips can you give to our listeners? Because I think one mistake is people go full-time way, way too early. And we've talked about, that's the thing we've been talking about many episodes and a lot of leaders talk about that's the mistake they made. But you have been wise enough, you still have your wellness center how do you do it all and still be a father and, you know, to your kids? So fortunately, I've been surrounded by great mentors. And um, one of my mentors, he, and he, this is just like strictly just for my, my chiropractic business. Um, he ultimately told me, he said, you're going to be able to do more in a shorter amount of time and be more effective in a shorter amount of time rather than working for 40, 50 hours a week. And that really, that really puzzled me. And I said, what do you mean by that? He goes, think about it. If you work all, all those hours and you're exhausted, by the end of the day, are you really going to be able to deliver the service that those patients need and deserve? And I said, no, not really. So he said, well, why don't you cut your hours down? So I took his advice and I went from working eight-hour days to working four-hour days. So I would work for only four hours a day and then I, would, I, I was doing that for five days a week and then I cut back down to two days a week. I mean, no, I'm sorry. For four days a week, I wanted to go to two days a week, but then that was that was virtually impossible. So I cut that. I cut back my hours. I and I and I really sh- um, strategically put my hours to where I would be of best service to my patients. So that was that was step number one. And then step number two was, you know, I, I I'm a I'm a huge fan of being effective rather than being busy, and. It, there's a misconception that people think that if you're busy, that you're getting a lot, a lot of stuff done, or you're important, and that's that's actually far from the truth. You know, I studied a lot of these millionaires and billionaires, and they're really not doing much throughout the day. You know, it's not like they're always consistently doing something, but they're doing one or two things, and they were focused on those one or two things, and that was really what 
what really um, got me to think, hey, you know what? When I was in chiropractic school or when I was playing baseball, all I did at that time was do that. So for me to be effective, I knew that, hey, when I'm, when, when I'm doing something, that's all I'm doing because there's this whole misconception that we need to be multitasking when we should not be multitasking. We should just be hyper-focused on one thing, be great at that at that moment. And then when your allotted time for that is done, you move on to the next thing and you'd be hyper focused on that. So for me, I, I schedule out my days and the way that I schedule out my things is what is going to give me the biggest bang for my buck. OK, so I schedule out my day. I have my working hours for in my office. Then I set aside time for my my network marketing business. I set aside time to still um, do my music and then I set aside time for my family. And those those are my core things that run my life. And I, I, I've done away with um, to do lists. And all I do now is I put things on my calendar for that day. And I just look at that day and I say, OK, these are things I need to be focused on. I have my time allotment, say from 10 to 11. I'm going to be hyper focused on on, you know, doing something for my network marketing business. And then I just give all my energy into that. Once that hour is done, I'm moving on to the next thing, you know, and, and that that's something that I think a lot of people in the beginning, we, tr- we think, oh, my gosh, I got to spend eight hours building my network marketing business. And, and guys, it doesn't take a lot of time to actually build your business. You know, if you if you have and you've developed, you know, a system that works for you, you should be able to just focus on exposing the business to people, following up, enrolling and training and all of that should be automated and systematized. And once you do that, you're going to find that you actually have a lot, a lot of time to do the things that you really want to do. It's tremendous words of wisdom that I couldn't agree with you more. Um, you know, thinking back, you know, you brought up a great point. When you have less, and this really goes back to your mentor, when you have less hours to work, you definitely get way more stuff done. Yeah. And, and, and I think in our culture, you brought it up, like we feel like we have to multitask. We always got to be doing something, right? And yeah, we're on Facebook, we're doing emails, but all that stuff is really very, like you said, busy work, not effective work. Mm-hmm. And I just think like, wow, when I first built my MLM business, when I first started, I, and that was just when I was single, that I was really, looking back, and I thought I was productive. I was really unproductive. And for me, you know, I kind of like got into it by luck where like uh, I had kids and I, I'm very adamant. I'm spending time with kids. I'm not doing any work. And so I had like a quota where I could only work, I'm only allowed to work because, you know, as entrepreneurs, like you and me, like we can work forever. Right, there's always yeah. something to work on, improve on. But I'm only allowed to work a certain amount of time, so you better get a lot of stuff done. And then you you realize what you just said, like a lot of the stuff don't matter. You know, you can only do. I think they they did a study where you you talked about the billionaires. You only do one or two things a day. At maximum, only three things in a day. The rest of the stuff is all garbage, busy work. You're not performing at a high level anyway. You might as well just drop them. Yeah, and and especially the network marketing for you listening out there, uh, you can apply that to any business, especially for network marketing. It really should just be about prospecting and f- prospecting and follow up, and training your team, talking to your team. And you probably sometimes some of you talk to your team way too much, you know. And, yeah, exactly. And, you're, and you become like, and we both made this mistake, Mike. Like we're training them so much because we don't want them to quit, but we're actually hurting them because then we're not training them to be independent. Yes. Right. Teach them. Yes. Like people ask me sometimes. I have a webinar. What time is the webinar? Or what's in my local time zone? I think they ask me like I'm like the official time zone converter. Like, <laughs> like what time zone is it in the uh, Finland? What time zone is it in Kuala Lumpur? Like for heck, I don't know. You're this is your and that's I think the big mindset. It's like I'm not your boss. You you are your own boss. So figure it out. And we have Google now. Just put time zone converter. It com- pops right up. You can convert it. And if you're asking your upline for how do I change my auto order? How do I change you know what? They're busy. Go find out yourself. Call the company office. Your company has probably great customer service. They'll teach you. But taking ownership of that is really important. And if you're a leader, like, don't help your downlines with those type of things. Teach them to take ownership of their business and then use that time to be more effective things. Because a lot of times those things that your downline ask you, they just drain the heck out of you. And then you're mm-hmm. like, no energy. Right? Yes. Or, or the downlines who want to quit spending time with them. Then you, you're so mentally drained. You don't even feel like you're like in the valley then, like you said, shared. You don't even feel like talking to prospects anymore. Yeah. Exactly. Or mentally, you feel like, oh, if I talk to this prospect, that prospect is going to end up like that person who's going to quit. Mm-hmm. Or, or this terrible mindset. 
Um, you know, Mike, one of the things I really respect you is back in the day, you talk about 2011 and even before 2011, you were not earning that much, but you always showed up for your team and even for your cross lines. People, you know, wouldn't benefit you financially to do this great uh, product trainings. And we kind of talked about right before the show, you're always looking to provide value and do what's good. Yeah. That, I think that's a major lesson because I think even when you're struggling, you still did that. And some people are like, why am I doing that? That's not productive work. But talk a little bit about the benefit and why it's important to give and, and just take responsibility to help your team. You know, uh, th- there's multiple reasons why you want to do that. Ultimately, one, it's because that's just the right thing to do. You know, as as human beings at the end of the day, when when we put our heads down to sleep, we got to ask ourselves, did I do anything to contribute to the world today? You know, because, um, you know, my, my grandmother, she passed away at age 61. And, um, and, and like I said, we didn't have much money in it, and we didn't, we didn't have the monetary means, you know, we didn't have the fancy cars and the nice houses. But like I said, we had a lot of love and, and I really saw the value of giving and of, and being a life of service when when we had her funeral because when we had her funeral the viewing for at her funeral lasted for hours and hours and there was just this long line of people some of them i've never met before and each of them came up to me and told me some story of how my grandmother served them in some way and some of the stories that our families never heard like you know she actually like one example was she she d- decided to decline getting a raise because it would mean that one of her other friends and colleagues would would take a pay cut because of her getting the raise and that just really stuck with me on you know being of service to people regardless of the monetary uh rewards that you're getting right then and there you know should be should be at the focus of 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 your life and then you know then behind that is when you serve people at just to serve them and just going out there and just giving of people, it, you'll be taken care of. Whether it's monetarily, whether it's through relationships or, or whatever, you'll always be taken care of if you just focus on serving people. And, and ultimately, that's that's what I you know why I did what I did and continue to do what I do because you know when when somebody comes up to me and they say you know the thing that you told me you inspired me. Or the information that you gave me really helped or it saved my life. That's worth more than all the money in the world for me. You know, so, I mean, that's why I do what I do. And you know what? I've been compensated fairly well for, for all those things. And I continue to be blessed, um, you know, by, by continuing to serve other people. Yeah, that's really, really fantastic. And it's really about the legacy you're creating. Exactly. And, and network marketing allows us to amplify that legacy. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, as we go to the end of the show, some really quick questions to pick your brain. Okay? Yeah. And these could be short answers. And one of them, what is one of your favorite success quotes that motivates you? Ooh, okay. So two comes to mind when, um, when I hear quotes. So my first one is by Albert Einstein. And it, he said that if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. And then the other one was no other success can compensate for failure in the home. Mm, I love the Albert Einstein one. You know, I just I was talking to my business partner yesterday uh, about that too. Like, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it well enough. Mm-hmm. Really good. What is one habit has helped you become successful? One habit is discipline, and and I, I learned that both from my dad. Um, he used to make me come home after after school, and then I would go straight to raking up the leaves, digging weeds in the yard, and and um, recycling uh, aluminum cans. And um, and also through baseball, you know, just being the discipline of going to practice and, and improving your skill sets. So discipline is, has helped me to become successful. Do you have a specific routine right now, like a very disciplined routine in the morning? Every day, every day. Yeah, I get up, um, you know, I start my day with gratitude. Uh, I have uh, just kind of really just reflecting on on my life. Um, some of the things that that, uh, you know, that I want to do, you know, reading my goals, um, you know, then I have I have a specific set of affirmations that I go through, uh, exercise, you know, and, and, and the exercise in the morning, I'm not like, I'm not like running a marathon or anything, just, just getting moving, um, maybe uh, going on the treadmill or walking around or doing some, um, some, uh, high intensity interval training. Um, and then, you know, making sure that I get my nutrients in me and then drinking a lot of water. 
and then getting ready and and then I open up my my either my laptop or my phone and I'm looking at my calendar what am I what does my day look like and then once I see more, once I see what's on my day then I see myself in those activities and I visualize myself doing those activities and accomplishing the things that I want to accomplish and and getting the results that I want to get and then I go out there and just attack the day what's the best piece of advice you ever received Ah, uh, best piece of advice would be never ever forget where you came from. And that came from my grandfather because I came home one day and I told him, I said, hey, I'm going to be a doctor. And he goes, you know what? No matter how many letters you get after your name, how many awards you win, and you can be the, become the most famous person in this world, but you never ever forget where you came from. What's your favorite prospecting tool? So say you're meeting a qualified prospect do you uh, send them a link to an online video or do you Skype with them or do you send them direct to a webinar room or do you meet them for coffee and then sh- use a newsletter? What do you like to use? Uh, I like to use our, our company video and uh, I'll just send them a link uh, to the video and then I'll follow up with them after. Do you have a favorite online resource like a Dropbox or Evernote or a favorite app on your phone that you could recommend? There's two that I use on a daily basis. One is Slack. And the other one is Trello. Slack is how I communicate with, uh, with our teams. And then Trello is how I just keep, keep organized for the different tasks that I got to do and how I collect my things um, and, and uh, keep everything all organized. Yeah, those are definitely very, very good productivity tools. Uh, what's one book you could recommend to ML Nation? Ooh, one book. Actually, uh, there's two, two, two of my favorite books that I read pretty much all the time. Um, one is Power Versus Force by David Hawkins. Um, and the other one is Influence the Psychology of Persuasion. Mm. And that's Robert Cialdini. Yes, I got to check out the Power Versus Force. Uh, but a Cialdini book is a classic. If you want to learn how to market, get people interested in you, definitely go check that out. It, it's a classic I must, must read. And ML Nation, I know you love audio because you listen to the show. So if you haven't already, you can get an amazing free audiobook at MLMNationBook.com. That is MLMNationBook.com. Now, Dr. Mike, you know it's coming. The last question, the million-dollar question. You ready? Ooh, I am ready. Hey, ML Nation, before we go to the million-dollar question, if you still haven't gone to my sponsoring workshop, hey, what are you waiting for? It's free, and it's so important. You need to learn how to sponsor. You need to know how to approach people with confidence, and you know how to, must know how to ask for the sale, sign them up, get them as a customer, because this business is about helping others, right? If you can't get people into the business, how can you make an impact in this world? And again, it's not just about making money, but making an impact. So in this webinar, I'll teach you to avoid the five deadly mistakes that uh, I made every one of them. And that's why I made no money my first two months, how to avoid those mistakes and what top earners do and how to overcome objections. And also a proven close, what I call a six-figure close that I used to sign up my party animal friend, uh, John Gerlitz, which you've heard on episode 50. Okay, so... Definitely check it out. It's two hours. It is free, but it is intense. Get notes, notepad, and ready to take notes and learn. Just uh, register for free at sponsoringworkshop.com. All right, so let's go to the million-dollar question. Here's the million-dollar question. Imagine you had to start all over again, and you knew no one, but yet all your current knowledge, skills, and wisdom. What's the first thing or the first place you'll go to find prospects and build an MLM business from scratch? I love this question. This, I, and, I, and by the way, I love the answers that people give to this. Um, and for me, the one thing that I would do is I would go and look for any type of group organization that, that you know, you're interested in or that you have the talent for. And then start building relationships and lending your expertise to that group. Like for me, like currently, I'm actually currently doing this right now. Um, I have my sons enrolled in in uh, in pony baseball, and I, I have no idea who any of these people are. You know, this is the first time I'm meeting them, but what I'm doing is I'm just going in there and volunteering, uh, helping out with the coaches, and just building relationships. And then over time, you never know where those relationships will lead to. And and the the biggest thing that you want to do with building relationships is one, you want to see how you can be of service to them, and then two. You got to get noticed. 
that's the that's one of the biggest things in business is people aren't noticed. Your business is not noticed. You are not noticed. So you got to find a way to become noticed and make making sure you have the skill sets in place. Um, one of my other favorite books, by the way, is is a Purple Cow by Seth Godin. You know, and I and I use that analogy is be the purple cow, be the thing that stands out in the crowd, you know, and, and see how you can serve others by being special and, and the way that you serve others will be the way that you become that purple cow. And now when you're that special person or you or, or they know who you are, they know what you can do, now they're gonna they're gonna come to you when they have a problem that they need a, a solution for and they know that you have that solution. So that's 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 literally what I'm currently doing right now. Fantastic advice, and I love the uh, fact that you brought up Purple Cow because that is again another, with the game changer book for me when I read it in 2004. I think 2005 when I read it, um, that teaches how to stand out, and that's why we actually for the second season of ML Nation we have the Purple episode named after the Purple Cow, you know, oh. to, to Seth Godin. So we just had one with Sandy Bobkin two episodes ago. Awesome. Um, the pur- purple cow definitely get that by Seth Godin. You know, Doctor Mike, thank you so much for your valuable time. Especially, you only limit to two or three important things a day, and you, you know, just doing this interview is one of them. I really appreciate it. Uh, as we wrap up, do you have any last words of advice? And then, what's the best way our listeners can connect and contact you? Uh, best way would be on Facebook. Look me up, um, Doctor Mike Okouchi, uh, Dr. Mike O K O U C H I on Facebook. Uh, same thing on Instagram, and then uh, you can on my website whatupdocuniversity.com, and then I also have my What Up Doc University podcast that's all about just health and wellness and, and, and um, interviews uh, from different health professionals all throughout the world. Uh, those are the best ways to get in touch with me. Uh, my last words for everybody would be to stick with it because there's there's a you know who. A lot of you that are listening to this, you guys are, you know, all throughout the spectrum of your business build. And a lot of times what happens is that we see the people, especially when we go to our company's conventions or our regional conventions, we see all these people getting awards and we see all the glitz and glamour. And then we either get motivated or we get demotivated by that. I want to tell you guys to not get demotivated, but actually look and connect with those people and ask them, what did you do? to get out of your funk or your dip or whatever because I know that you went through that, you know, because you're going through that right now. So ask them what did they do to do that and 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 realize that you got to keep going. You know, you're just that one step away, you know, like in, in, in the book, um, Think You Grow Rich, you're, you're three feet from gold. You're, you're, you're right there. And when you, when you push through those barriers, and you break through to the next level, you're going to look back at what you went through and you're going to be like, that was, was that really hard? It's not that hard. And then you're going to come into something else. You're going to always have some type of obstacle to overcome and, and just realize that the higher you climb upon the mountain, the more difficult things are going to get. But you got to just sharpen your skill sets, keep the pace, don't lose your focus, and just go out there and transform your entire world, guys. I mean, we have the power within our hands to touch the lives of millions, if not billions of people throughout this entire world. And wouldn't it be a great place to see everybody on this world living their purpose, not having to complain about their health, not having to, um, to complain about their, their wealth, and just really living the life that they're supposed to lead. And that's what we have the power to do. ML Nation, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And today, you've been hanging out with Dr. Mike Okouchi. So keep up the momentum and go to mlnation.net and type in, just put Mike, M-I-K-E, and you see Dr. Mike at M-I-K-E, and you see Dr. Mike there. And all the show notes, the links to the great books that he talked about will be right there. In order to be successful in network marketing, you must help others. So, Dr. Mike, thanks again for sharing your valuable time with MLM Nation. We're grateful to you, and we appreciate you for having a positive impact on millions of distributors worldwide. Thanks you again so much, and God bless you. Uh, God bless you too, Simon. Hey, MLM Nation, this is Simon Chan. Before we go to recap and review, here's a tip to help you learn quicker and to really grow quicker. And we all know leadership success is about growing, right? The more you grow, the quicker you grow. Uh, the more you grow your mind the better people you attract. And it's through self-development, books. And of course, not not everyone's a reader. 
And this is something that really helped me out at the beginning. And especially even now I do this is through audio books. Okay, especially two of my favorite books ever. Um, I actually ended up reading them, but I started listening to them first. was like, Talent is Overrated. Um, that was a book that just talked about, it's not about talent, but hard work and what, the, what type of hard work you actually need to be successful. I remember I listened to that audio book. It was amazing, amazing. Another one is Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. Talk about the 10,000 hour rule and what made a Beatles successful, what made Bill Gates successful. And I remember I was jogging and I would uh, keep running. I wouldn't even, I didn't want to stop running because uh, I normally jog for 35, 40 minutes. I went for an hour because I kept on wanting to listen to that. And it's all through uh, mlmnationbook.com, through audiobooks. And for being a loyal listener of ML Nation, you can get a free audiobook when you go to mlmnationbook.com mlmnationbook.com. So I'm not saying just give up reading. You still got to read. But during your downtime, during when you're doing errands and you're exercising, audiobooks is an amazing way to learn. I, that's what I did. So mlmnationbook.com. Go there and get your free audiobook. And happy learning. ML Nation, a great episode from Dr. Mike Okoluchi. All right, I don't know if I even pronounce his name right. I always call him Dr. Mike. Uh, but go to mlnation.net, connect with him. M I K E, you see Dr. Mike will be popped right up there. A fantastic individual, awesome, you know, but awesome person in general. And just the thing that impressed me, he does this business part time. He still runs that clinic. And it's all about time management. Like the biggest mistakes that we talked about this over and over again is people go full time way too early, right? A lot of times, it's not because you need more time to be successful, it's better time management. And I, I want to emphasize this again. I, we, you know, Dr. Mike mentioned it. I talked about it. It's like when you work less, you actually get so much more done. I remember, um, you know, for me to gain my productivity, when I first got married, I was like, oh my goodness, I now I got to spend time with my, you know, my wife and all that. You know what? It was the biggest blessing. Not only that, she's the most awesome woman, but I became more productive as well because I had to spend great time for her. And then when I had my first kid, I thought, oh, there was another jump in productivity. And then I, just when I thought I had it down, then boom, number two came in. And just when I finally, it's like, all right, I got this mastered. And number three came in. And the cool thing is you just adapt. I realized I have less and less time. But what other things can I outsource? What other things are going to empower other, other leaders to do? And that's not just for traditional business, but network, especially network marketing. And I also brought up a point that make sure you're working with people that deserve your time. You know, uh, you can be flooded with emails. If you have a downline, flooded with emails, text messages, asking you for help, train them to be independent distributors, not dependent. Here's the four lessons. I want to go over the four lessons that Dr. Mike talked about when he was in the valley, when he was deep, you know, in 2011. He had a third kid. He had health issues. He couldn't... Four lessons. Number one, only you only lose ground when you throw dirt. And, you know, he had left his the first company, lose some, uh, you know, bad feelings or whatever, some things that he, you know, thumbs things or thumbs stuff that he did, he regretted. Only lose ground when you throw that. Don't throw the dirt. Okay. Number two is relationships always come before business. Businesses come and go, but relationships stay forever. So don't burn those relationships. Number three, business is just a business. So don't take it personal. When things don't go well, it's not the person's fault. Business is never personal. And number four is if you just don't get out of the valley, you never see the mountain. So for some of you there, you may be in the valley, right? The good thing is if you're in the valley, you know it's not going to get any worse. If you're down in the pits, you know, if you keep going, have some type of movement, you'll get there. And so Mike talks about, you know, uh, his coach told him, when life knocks you down, what are you going to stay down let the boss just pass you, go past you? No, you're going to move. And so you may not be, oh, I'm going to be building the business two, three hours a day, talking to 20 people, doing all these 10 presentations a week. No, you may just, hey, make two phone calls right now. Like right after the show, we're going to end in a minute or two, go make two quick phone calls. Get back on your feet because, you know, the best way to get out of the funk is through action. Right, it's a little bit, and don't yeah. You know, it's like if you don't want to exercise, you haven't exercised in a while. You need to exercise. Don't say I'm going to go to the gym for an hour. Just go there for, just go out there and do you know jumping jacks, five jumping jacks, just build steps, do something, and that get that will get you out of the get you out of the rut, and out of the valley and on your way to the mountain. 
Another thing is time management, be hyper-focused. You know, Dr. Mike only does one, two, three things a day. He's very focused. As you know, all people who are very productive, entrepreneurs, they schedule, they plan their days. They plan their days. That's why I felt really special that he took his time. He's wanting to do all these different things. He still took the time to give back to ML Nation. I really appreciate him for that. Stay hyper-focused and work on the things that are effective, not keep you busy. So what are the two or three things that will make you the most money today? The rest of the stuff, I tell you, you can drop it. You know, the world won't end if you don't do it. Do the two or three things that will make you the most money. And most of you, the answer is prospecting, following up, and training the people who deserve your time. Last tip Mike gave really good that I told us the end of the show. I don't know if you got it. His last words is, when you go to a convention, when you go to an event, don't just say, oh, uh, what's the number one secret to success? How did you build a success? Well, I want to be like you. You know, all these people come to me and say that. Instead, ask them, what, because... When you're at your worst moment, at your valley, what did you do to get out of it? What was the self-talk? Because everyone who's successful has been down in the pits at anybody that Mike has talked about. And by the way, if you're listening to me and you haven't been down to the point where you wanted to quit, you hate the business, I just always tell my coaching clients, hey, you haven't worked hard enough or been in the business long enough because if you keep going, you will go get down to the valley. But all the successful people, they keep going and get out of the valley. So, Awesome episode. Thank you, Dr. Mike. Make sure you connect with him, mlnation.net. Just put in Mike at the search bar. And uh, if you like this, please subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. Our team appreciates it. We're going to second year. We're going bigger, better, stronger. The audience is going fast. Downloads are going fast. Just, just so proud of the network marketing community for just supporting each other, you know, and realizing we're all in this together. So thank you for sharing. And so go out there. Do the two or three things. Be effective and productive. So what are those two things? Prospect. Go call someone. Go follow up with someone. Go train someone that deserves your time. So go out there, MLM Nation. Remember, we're in the business to help others. So go out there and have a positive impact on someone's life today. God bless you all. Thank you so much for joining us today on MLM Nation. Head over to MLMNation.net for full recaps of every show, our training articles, and helpful resources. Your MLM success is waiting for you. So prepare to take off.